Trip is teaming up with your local Chevy dealers to award a new Silverado Trail Boss to one lucky Packers fan in the opening drive sweepstakes. The Silverado is the most dependable, longest-lasting, full-size pickup on the road. To enter, stop by your local Quick Trip, purchase any pothole frozen pizza with your rewards card, and that's it. You're entered. If selected, you'll win $25 for every yard earned on the Packers opening drive and a chance to win a Silverado Trail Boss. No purchase necessary. Chevrolet and Quick Trip, proud partners of Packers football. Welcome to another episode of Same Cast, Different Day Podcast. I'm Martell Rowland, and Tina Marie is out due to uh, passing in her family, so... Quick Trip is teaming up with your local Chevy dealers to award a new Silverado Trail Boss to one lucky Packers fan in the opening drive sweepstakes. The Silverado is the most dependable, longest-lasting, full-size pickup on the road. To enter, stop by your local Quick Trip, purchase any pothole frozen pizza with your rewards card, and that's it. You're entered. If selected, you'll win $25 for every yard earned on the Packers opening drive and a chance to win a Silverado Trail Boss. No purchase necessary. Chevrolet and Quick Trip, proud partners of Packers football. Unexpected trouble? CashNet USA can take the stress out of borrowing emergency funds. Our fast, secure application process makes it easy to apply online 24 7. Plus, CashNet USA offers same day funding if approved before 10 30 a.m. Central Time, Monday through Friday. Additional terms may apply. Visit CashNetUSA.com or tap the banner to apply today. Lamarck is filling her spot this week. Sadly. And that's how you're going to treat me. I'm just, just saying. Yeah. Yes, it's me, Marcus Buckhalter. I'm back in the building when, once again. What building? We ain't in no building. Anywho. <laughs> <laughs> but um, before we get things started, I just want you guys to uh, make sure you go and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Make sure you follow and subscribe to the podcast because that do help. Help get the podcast out there and share with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, so on about Saint Casual Friday podcast. So on this episode, um, we're going to be covering um, elections here in Wisconsin. We recently had the primary election, which was Tuesday, April 7th. And it was horrible. And uh, the day before, April 6th, the governor, Tony Evers, tried to post have the in-person uh, voting postponed until July, no, ju- not July, August, and the Republicans challenged it in the Supreme Court and somehow won, forcing 18,000 plus people in the city of Milwaukee to go out and vote, but due to lack of staff dropping out and volunteers because of the coronavirus, there wasn't enough polling places open. Which, I don't see how they came up with the master plan that they came up with at the last minute. Well, they keep on saying that he, the, I don't know what they call it, the Milwaukee County voting whatever, should have called in the National Guard to come in and help them out more than what they did. So they can have, so that way they can have more than five polling places open. Now, mind you, yes, there was only five polling places open for a city of roughly 600,000 people that live in the city of Milwaukee compared to where in Madison they had 63 I believe of their 80 something polling places open with a population of only 295,000 people which I think was very unfair and um, some people said they did it to suppress um, the black community and also the Latino Mexican community basically minorities from being able to go out and vote. Which it didn't work because a lot of them still went out and voted. But to be honest, a lot of people did not go vote. That should have went and voted. True, true. Which is always, though. I mean, yeah, but I feel more people would have came out and voted if it was it was postponed to June and they didn't have to stand in line for two hours because I had to go experience this for myself. And I could literally say I was literally four blocks away from the entrance to get into the polling place. Yeah, luckily, I'm I'm glad that you did that because I didn't have to worry about that. I just came and jumped in line with you. But for all the people that did stand in line, we really appreciate that. And it really does show that a lot of people really want their voices to be heard. But one thing that had got me, though, was the guy. Um, he was, he had a, it was the picture I had saw online. And he was, it was the voter. He had a, a sign on around his neck that said, voter die. And I yeah, feel like I go, going out with this election and going out to go vote, it was really like a voter die situation. It was. And then, like, a lot of people, they 
weren't, you know, really protecting themselves and stuff like that. And I didn't wear no mask or gloves. Well, you know, that because of where we work, we know, to, you know, keep the social distancing thing. I ain't keep social distancing either. Well, it, <laughs> it, well, I'm sorry because, okay, first of all, on top of trying to keep social distancing for us, it we got rained on and held on at the same time. And then they waited until after the rain and hell passed to talk about, oh, do you want a plastic bag to cover up? Yeah, but they didn't want to get wet. So we had to stand out there and get wet? Well, I guess so, because you stood out there and got wet and you still cast your vote, though. That's what counts. I mean, yeah. And by the way, uh, so some of y'all don't know, these shows are uh, pre-taped in advance. <laughs> <laughs> just, just to let y'all know that. But, yeah, they are... but. I did go and cast my vote. It seemed because it seemed like it too. It was the whole process was faster once I got inside the place to vote. But then the line outside and the waiting was just tremendous, and I got so upset and was ready to knock the hell out of somebody because I said one more person drive past me on a bike, on a hub around or a car. <laughs> yes, a hub around, filming me and all the rest of these people standing in line instead of getting in line and voting themselves. Right. I was going to lose it. Well, yeah, because I saw a lot of that. People riding past saying, yeah, vote, 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 vote. But they weren't standing in line with us to cast their vote. But those are going to be the main people that are complaining come time for the new people to step in. So, um, I I believe it was on Fox News where they were like, a lot of states were looking at Wisconsin for this due to the fact that I think other states are now going to go challenge. And it's other Republicans, other states are going to challenge like the Wisconsin Republicans did to move forward with the elections during the pandemic, which is crazy because like we're steady being told to stay at home during a pandemic. And be yet mm-hmm. you force thousands of people to go out and vote. And like they said, it was suppressed people from voting. Well, yeah, I kind of, well, I agree with what you're saying, but I kind of see like the whole, like everything still has to move on. Everything does has to move on, so, but at the same time, this is something that could have been postponed, like Vince Man should have postponed WrestleMania. <laughs> yeah, well, like I said, it, it could have been postponed, and it could have been thought out a whole lot differently than what it was, and they could have had a more polling places available for the public to go to and actually vote. And then the whole mail-in vote thing, that was just horrible. Uh, I, so after the... After the polls had closed, speaking of the mail-in ballots, after the poll closed, apparently, and I guess in one of the sorting centers where the mail gets sorted at, they found over 700 or something ballots and, and at the uh, mail center that wasn't, I guess, get stamped and delivered or whatever. So there wasn't post dated. So uh, those 700 or some ballots might not even be counted, counted. even though those 700 or some ballots was, ballots was already sent in. So this was just another scheme by Republicans, once again, because... The actual, um, what they call absentee voting, was actually supposed to be April 13th, where they're supposed to be due. So they went and challenged that in court, too, to have that uh, done April 7th, to have the absentee uh, voting done. Which was, so basically the day before, so the day before, this is when everything came out. That, hey, you know, your absentee ballots are due on the 7th. And on top of that, you have to go vote in person if you didn't go get your, if you didn't get your absentee ballot. Even though people were sent in for the absentee ballot, like one lady said, she uh, I think sent in her call twice for an absentee ballot, three in a span of three weeks, and still have not received it, and didn't get a chance to vote. Well, yeah, because on what was it? I think it was Fox Six. They said the same thing, like 150 something people in a certain area, like they sent for absentee ballots, and they never. Never received them, or it's it's close to a hundred, a hundred, a hundred. I think they said between a hundred and some thousand, two hundred some thousand absentee ballots were sent out, but half of those wasn't even well. I should say requested, but half of those wasn't even half the people didn't receive them. Yeah, they said like only a quarter of them received their ballots, and like I said, it's just a whole down, let down from the the judicial system the governmental system is just it's it's horrible like they just dropped the ball and i don't think like i said i don't think this was thought through so it just goes to show like if this pandemic is still happening later on in a year what's going to happen with the presidential election um i think they're coming up with a plan now to figure out how they're going to do the president presidential election because 
they were thinking about going to doing absentee ballots for the whole entire presidential election. Mm -hmm. But then Donald Trump gets on TV like, I don't like... I don't like uh, male voting because cheating is involved in male voting. They cheat. There's cheating involved in male voting. I don't want any male voting because they're cheating. Why would everybody talk about Donald Trump? They got to do their hands <laughs> like that. Y'all, I wish y'all could see how he was doing his hands when he was just imitating Donald Trump. That's but, how he does it. Yeah, and, it, and like I said, it, he gets on TV every day and talks about, you know, the coronavirus and everything. And it seems like he re repeats himself every day about nonsense. What were we watching? And um, it was something we were watching, I believe, on World News. And he was reading something. And then he he found out for himself at the same time that he was reading that um, it's like he had a, one of them after he read it like oh okay I guess this is true moment right <laughs> like you're the president you should know about this stuff and it's if if it's true or not like you should know you're the president right sorry for the uh, volume change guys we're peaking a little bit too high um so yeah I I was I mean but the whole thing though and it. it Everybody kept on trying to, like, blame it on the election commission for um, the way how things went and only having five polling places open. I mean, yes, we could kind of blame it on the, on the election commission on top of that. But at the same time, it's the government's fault. Like I it said, is. for years in the state of Wisconsin, the, the Repu Republicans has been trying to, has been, since it's majority Republicans that's in the House now, as far as Wisconsin, they, for years, been trying to, find ways to stop the urban people urban people from voting from the minorities from voting mm -hmm. and every time they keep being successful and this is one of those things where they're successful and i think the higher ups and not even federal or whatever supreme the state supreme court or the, the whatever's higher than the state supreme court needs to step in and be like we know what we need to make some changes somebody needs to step in but it also, people uh, need to go out and vote. And there you go. I'll, but I'll, then they keep figuring out ways to get people from voting. Like that one election with the, uh, if you didn't have a valid ID to show, they wouldn't let you vote. I mean, but it's just it's it's just common sense, like to have a valid ID. Val exactly. I, I like, mean, how yes, of course. Over the age of eighteen and don't have a valid ID, it just doesn't make sense to me. I mean, yes, of course. But then, like, they were trying to fight that, though. I mean, yes, now you still got to show your ID, but then. It was a lot of people, the younger people, I should say, who, like I, like I keep saying, this the generation under me is just lost. They are. Because a majority of them probably don't really have a state valid ID. No. And so then when it came down to voting, they couldn't go vote. And then they knew that. And they capitalized on that. And that's how a few, I believe a few of these elections were won. Like I said, there's been so many legal battles in the higher courts here due to voting, about voting here in yeah. Wisconsin. And I feel it's just time for somebody to step in. It's time for a change. Like, they mentioned that Tory Lowe was on the ballot. And I didn't know that Tory Lowe you, you know, and, you know, I kind of, when I first saw his name on the ballot, it kind of, like, was like, do I want this guy representing me as an alderman? Like, can I see him representing me as an alderman? Like, not only, I don't know if, well, I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, so where we are. So I don't, a lot of people might not know who Tory Lowe is, but he's one of the local activists that we have here in the state, of, in the city of Milwaukee. And he does a lot of good work and, you know, he does a lot of good activism in the community, but I don't see him as an alderman. See, I live here and don't know who he is. So I would actually like to have him on a podcast and interview him because, or get to know him because... I have no idea who he is. I'm gonna have to reach out to him and see if he we can get him on, get him on and talk yeah, to him. Yeah, because I I have no idea who he is. Like I said, like I heard, like I kind of heard the name before, but mm -hmm. other than like seeing a few Facebook posts that I see, I don't know too much about him. Well, yeah, he speaks up for a lot of injustice that's going on. You know, not just with, you know, police brutality because we see a lot of people try to step in when we see the police brutality, but he steps in when we have parents who leave their kids at home and uh, you know create house fires and things like that and he steps in to try to help with a lot of the community drives that's going on in the neighborhoods and you know he does a lot for he stands up a lot for the black community i can say that for you know my mm -hmm. part but other than that i don't know I deloitte is the world's largest professional services network and there's a reason for that consistency 
But how does a giant global company provide consistency? Easy. With ServiceNow Digital Workflows, they connect all 300,000 plus of their professionals on a single platform, the Now Platform. So whether someone works in Indonesia, Mexico, or any other of the 148 countries they operate in, ServiceNow helps Deloitte perform their work from a common and connected place. They can leverage the same powerful tools they need to adapt to changing markets and get the same proactive support they need to thrive. And with ServiceNow Workflows for IT, Deloitte can easily consolidate and scale their technology so professionals can access it wherever they are. So, how does Deloitte keep a consistently high standard for global clients? With ServiceNow Workflows that keep a consistently high standard for global professionals. Whatever your business is facing, let's workflow it. Learn more at servicenow.com. Verbo has private whole vacation homes for the whole family. So whether it's around the pool or patio, you'll have the space and privacy to reconnect with the people you love. Download the Verbo app. The time for getting back together is now. I can't see him on the business aspect of what's going on, you know, in the Capitol. So I don't, does he, I don't think he goes to the Capitol. I don't think Alderman's has anything to do with the Capitol. Well, I, I, I don't think know. The Alderman just do just do like the local, local mun- municipalities. I guess so, but yeah, I just I still don't see him like even then. Like even if I think if I saw him on TV, like I've never seen him in a suit. I don't even know what he looks like. Like, I've never seen him in a suit. Like, you know, I understand, like, you know, you stand up for the, the, the people who really don't get counted, but you still have to look the part. Like, a lot of people try to downplay Lena Taylor because of, you know, where she comes from and the way that she acts. You know, all African-American people have a certain attitude, you know. It's just how we are. It's just in our nature. But we all we are always perceived as an angry person. We're not always angry. It's just we get put in angry situations. And she handled a a situation in an improper way to be, you know, a senator. So, you know, a lot of people try to look down on her for that. But I, I look past that and I look at what she's actually saying and what actually goes on. Like what I actually see them doing, you know, in the community. I, I don't... For, for, for me... My only problem with her is, like, once again, like, I believe I said it on the last episode, is that she's one of those politicians who, once again, during her campaign, she's only catering to lower class people. And that's why one of the reasons is making it so hard for me to vote for. I understand, like, yes, the lower class people is the ones who can help you get in office and they go out and vote and vote for you. But at the same time, you need to figure out a way how to connect with people who are above lower class people. Right, because I we've I've had this debate with a lot of my coworkers. You know, being in the middle class, you know, a lot of people be like, well, how do you how do you classify yourself as middle class? Because I'm one of the people who pay the higher taxes, but don't get a tax refund when it comes to the beginning of the year. You know, I'm one of the people who go to work, even when like now when everybody else is off of work, I'm still at work. You know, it's those people that. I understand what you're saying, but yeah, from her, just from that standpoint, I understand what you're saying, but at the same time, it was like, she doesn't represent them people, because every last time I saw her on TV, she was just talking about what she can do for the middle class, and how many programs she could come up with, and how we can fix this in the lower areas, I'm like, I'm like, okay, but what are you going to do for me? What, yeah, what, what it is, I think they're just trying to motivate people to not be lower class they're trying to eliminate the lower class so we don't have that divide that's going on but in between people if you study coming up with programs that's going to make them feel comfortable being a lower class person why do it true and that's my whole issue with her true. like i'm gonna need you to step it up if you want to be a mayor of a city that's one of the things that you're going to have to to step up so um so speaking of the election still um, if you follow me on my Facebook page, I had posted a question earlier and I said, how do you feel? How do everyone feel about the election on Tuesday? Should the election had happened? So, uh, a lot of some people going to be mad. So I'm about to actually say whatever your Facebook name is on here. <laughs> so Brittany Wilson, um, she said, no, 
day of wait, wait, wait. This is what I said. The wine of the day, y'all. What, what <laughs> other episode? I wish I could plug it, but they ain't giving us no coins. Right. Um, it's cute though. <laughs> No, they say social distancing, and then they say, then they have thousands of people in line for hours at five polling stations, is what Brittany said, which is true. They did have people in line for hours, but they did let the elderly and the disabled people skip the line and go vote right away. So I can't give them um, credit for that. And they had to drive through, um, the drive through, uh, Voting. Yeah, but that line was long as it was ever long too. And ridiculous. But it was this one lady, she stood in line for two hours. At a at a polling at where she normally go vote at, which is at uh, I believe she said Marshall High School. Mm-hmm. I don't know if Marshall High School was one of the voting sites. It was, it like was. A Marshall, okay. So Marshall High School. Well, then she said I stood in line for two hours for them to tell me that I'm at the wrong polling place. Yep. That I'm supposed to go to Riverside High School, although Marshall is my place I normally go vote at. Marshall, which you know, I say so I had high school here in Milwaukee. And she said, so by the time she left Marshall High School and got to Riverside High School, they told her she couldn't vote because she had got there one minute late. And which is ridiculous because, like I said, it just was not organized at all. Another way to suppress urban people from voting. It was just, it it was horrible. And the only reason I knew where to go vote was because my mother and my brother, my older brother, went out earlier in the day. And they told us we were supposed to go to Riverside. Oh, I, I I went online like normal people. I would say, you know, <laughs> I'm one of them older people who don't be Googling everything. So if I don't... I didn't Google the day of the election and got on your Facebook thing at the top and say, hey, click here to find out where's your local polling place or where you're supposed to go and vote. Once again, one of them older people who don't be on Facebook and all of that stuff all the time, you know, I don't <laughs> get to see that like that. So, so anywho, so uh, Tawanda Brown, her response was just, hell no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> she said hell no nah, they should not have had but voting basically uh Risa thompson which is the half of carissa hey carissa how you doing um uh, she said hell no nah, but they was wait hell no nah, but that was the wait why can i read this hell no nah, but that was they way of spreading this bullshit oh she mean the coronavirus okay i'm i'm i don't know how i got that messed up i don't know either maybe it's that class but, but I didn't have that much of it. <laughs> but, I, I did have a margarita earlier. Shout out. This is a plug, though. Shout out for the El, El, uh, where I go to? El, El Fuego's for the margarita I had earlier. They are open. And if you want to get to some uh, nice Mexican food, and they have curbside pickup, and you can buy margaritas, too, for $7. But, yeah, I feel like, you know, like, they just knew once a lot of people didn't find their polling place or went to the wrong polling place that they were just going to not even try to attempt to go nowhere else. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. That's true. But you would think that a lot of people like, oh, well, since everything is closed and I can't really go out and do anything, maybe I can't go stand in line and vote. And they gave me something to do today, but they didn't do it, a lot of people. But I can't say at Riverside Heights High School, it was some guys there playing a saxophone and, um, some type of guitar. It was a wooden guitar. Kind of trying to keep the people entertained. I think one of the uh, local um, college houses that's near there, they had music playing to keep people entertained. Uh, they was giving out free water to people that was in line. Oh, okay. Uh, um, I think they had some stools set up for people, like for some people who can sit down while they were waiting in line. Um, black people. I know this is a little bit off topic, but can y'all stop trying to profit off of every... Uh, I don't even know how to put it. So, I was standing in line. And by the way, I didn't get a chance to vote early, by the way. But I was standing in line, and this guy walked past me. He's like, I got those Corona masks for sale. <laughs> <laughs> well, they can't sell DVDs and movies, so, you know, CDs no more. So, they had to figure out something wait, else. Wait, because he's like, they rewash, re- re- they rewashable and reusable, too. All you got to do is wash them. Five dollars, five dollars. I got them Corona masks for sale. I'm like, is he serious right now? Like, people try to make a profit off of everything. Here it is, people giving away these masks for free, and you want me to give you five dollars for something I can get from work for free because I work at a hospital, so I can get it for free. But still, <laughs> I'm not about to pay you. Well, he the- figured that was the perfect opportunity. He had hundreds and hundreds of people standing in line waiting to vote. First of all, where did you steal these masks from? <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, no, because th- it was in a nice plastic package. Oh, so they weren't like masks that he made? No. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, mister, I'm sorry you were wrong for that. <laughs> <laughs> Those were clearly stolen masks. So uh, even Tina Marie commented, and she said, no. Hey, they, Tina Marie. <laughs> she said, no, they handled it horribly and everything, which, yes, it was handled very hor- horribly. But they keep on saying they called in National Guard people to help. But I'm like, what National see, Guard I people did y'all call in to help? Because they were dressed in regular clothes, probably. But I'm like, why? What, who do y'all call in to help? And what was they helping doing? Because then they, like, they was moving a line along or like they was standing in line helping with the ballots or anything. I didn't see any, unless they, I mean, well, maybe they, you know what? Let me not say that because maybe they were in line. So Right. But I think the whole thing that was just so wrong is I think majority of the people in the city of Milwaukee who did have to vote all had to go to River High, Riverside High School because we have different you know, wards here. I'm pretty sure mm-hmm. every state has different wards. And majority of the wards were designated at one high school because there's about six or seven wards there voting at, at yeah. one place. So that's why Riverside High School had the majority of the people on the, the north north side because people who live 50 something blocks away from riverside high school had to come to riverside yeah and l- vote. luckily i know my war so it didn't take long to be looked up but it just goes to show that we really have to pay attention to what's going on and really have to know what we're doing and what we're getting our- ourselves into because if we don't we're going to keep being blindsided by things like this. And this is one of those elections where I was talking about people need to not only vote for president because now this election determines like our Supreme Court and everything. And our person who's in our Supreme Court is the Republican. He's he's he was endorsed by Donald Trump. And I, you know, speaking of them, you know, like. It's, it's crazy because, you know, we listen to all these ads on TV and stuff like that, and we hear them bash each other, but then at the next convention, they're shaking hands and mingling and drinking wine together and clinking glasses. Mm-hmm. Like, so we have to really be careful and really do our research and know who we're vo- voting for. That's it, yeah. So the same person who sent thousands of people out, and that's what I'm wondering, is there going to be a spike in coronavirus cases due to this voting that happened and i i, I, I kind of believe that there is no matter how much wiping and cleaning they did in between each person voting i believe that it's going to be a spike like it's, it, because it was just you know like a, it's a, from from what i've been hearing it's something that should, can be lingered in the air for two to three hours so you know like if anybody just sneezes and you walk into that mist and you know, and I already, I hate when people sneeze and don't cover their mouth or cough and don't cover their mouth, but you know, that mist that comes out of people's mouth, you yeah. know, cause I don't know. So speaking of the mist, I don't know if people seen the uh, Facebook video, but it showed this guy testing different masks where he was spray. Yeah. And then he'll show you how much stuff is going through the mask. So a lot of these, mask that the, even a homemade mask, if you're not like double layering mm-hmm. over them, it's a, basically a waste because when somebody, if somebody was wearing the same homemade mask, like a bandana or something, they was to sneeze. All this stuff is still going to go flying yeah, yeah. through that bandana, which is can, can, can contaminate people. Still. Yeah. So I, I want people to realize that like yeah. double your material on your mask. It might be hard to breathe in, but hey, you need to double it. Not mm-hmm. even that. Just cough into your elbow. If you got a long sleeve shirt, cough into your elbow. Cough into your elbow. Like when I have on a, a short sleeve shirt, I would cough. I just do my pull up material. Your, yeah, like you pull up the top to of your mouth. shirt. Yeah, you pull up the top of your shirt and cover your mouth and sneeze. Exactly. You know, we just have to be more conscious of what we're doing. You know, like those are things that were overlooked before, but now at this time we have to really be conscious of that and make sure you're washing your hands, doctors and psychiatrists, because. <laughs> I watch a lot of people walk in and out the bathroom and use the bathroom and not wash their hands. Please wash your hands. Oh, man, I lost my... Okay, there we go. So, uh, moving on, I got a few more left. Uh, Rachel Banks. Lord have mercy, Rachel. Hey, Rachel. All she put was no. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Tommy Wilson Jr. put a picture. I don't know who this man is, but I know he'd be on ESPN, but I can't ever remember his name because he's not really that relevant to me. But he just put the the shaking dude shaking his head no. 
Uh, not Cordell Stewart. What's that running back dude? I don't know I that running back dude's name. name. I can't ever remember his name either. Uh, Barbara Austin. She put nope with two exclamation points. Too much body contact. And it, it, I didn't touch nobody. Like, no, I didn't touch anybody. But like I said, it was still moments where, where, like when you were walking in between the cubicles to get to your voting station, when you were going to the back to put your ballot into the, you know, the box. But it and, wasn't really that many people back there when you put your ballots into the no, box. No, so it they, was just the people who worked, who represented the ward to scan your ballot. Yeah, they tried the to keep it at a minimal. But like I said, it was still moments like when when it was when we were actually in there voting. Like it was at least a hundred people in there while we were voting. <clears throat> You know, inside the gymnasium, like, although they were still trying to practice social distancing, it's still a lot of people in there. A lot of germs are being spread, a lot of breathing, and a lot of stuff is happening. Speaking of, I don't know if that's the original Riverside High School building. Because I don't know if the North Division building is older than the Riverside building. Is North Division building older? Because I know the North Division building now is built in, like, the 70s. Yeah. I don't know if Riverside High School was built after that. I'm not sure. But for that school to look that huge, that gym is awfully small mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> for that to be a high school gym. I just want to put that out there. I thought it was going to be way, way bigger than that because North Division Gym is like three times the size of that. And that building is way older than that one. Well, yeah, they tried to make it like a college campus look on the outside. It failed. The whole theme. It, is a ver- it was like the fail. open campus. So um, the last one is Christine Franklin, who agreed with us in voter suppression. Yeah, like I said, it just it just goes to show like they 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 could have postponed it. They could have took this into matters way sooner than what they had did. Because like I said, they you knew voting was coming up months and months ago, and you knew about the virus months ago, and y'all put us into social distancing. So why would you still hold this right? And I wish. Process? I wish I can legally play this audio for you guys, but I really can. But if you go on my Facebook and follow it, there was a, I believe it was on Fox News, this guy on there, and I didn't get a name, they didn't have a name at the bottom or nothing, but he was talking about what he saw here in Wisconsin, and he was talking about how the same thing, like how uh, Republicans has been doing this for years in Wisconsin, and then that... They did this to stop from the, the minorities to vote. And this is a white man mm-hmm. saying this. And he, he uh, basically said, yeah, this is their way in being able to control everything. And this is how it's been for years. Republicans being controlling everything by finding a way to keep the minorities from but voting. My whole thing, like, because, you know, our brother, he spoke up on this the other day. And he was talking about this whole control thing. But my thing is, what are they trying to control? Because a lot of things, like, now, like, what well, they're trying to control because they represent the high class people. So they're going to pass laws and do what they can to make sure that the high class people stay rich. Well, I'm not going to say we have a lot of black high class people like that because I don't, you know, no, I don't I'm, know. I'm not saying like black high class. I'm just saying high class people that's within the high class people in general, people like them. Okay. Okay. Now I'll give what you say. Okay. So like yeah, they okay. like laws that would help their friends, like their friends who right. own businesses or who like are considered high class. The same class. money as them. Right. So okay. Got you. They 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 trying to control everything to keep things easy for them to make the world happy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Make their world happy for them or whatever, and create tax cuts for them, and create ways that for their friends to be able to cut cut through no you know, different things. I didn't get that. Like when. He was giving out this stimulus money and all of this stuff like that. Like he would, the first thing he did. I ain't getting no stimulus money yet. Big. He went to big corporations. Like what? 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 What is that? What are what they going to need to bail out? Because at the end of the day, people are still going to go to Macy's and all of these other stores because they still need to buy clothes. But, but what about these mom and pop like car shops and the the little cafes and diners that they have and the hair stores that are black owned, not buy some Chinese franchise and all of these things like that. Like, what happens with those people? Well, that's why he's trying to put my money into banks so they can, once again, have to take out more loans to that pay have for to their pay current back. business, to pay for expenses now that they're going to eventually have to pay back. But then they said these loans are supposed to be able to help them so that and not put them in debt, which I think this is something that's still going to put small business, businesses in debt, taking out more loans so that... They can pay mm-hmm. for their products and pay their employees and be able to pay to 
to stay open because all a lot of these restaurants can only just do curbside like there's i have never went to el fuego there's normally about a 15 20 minute wait for your food mm-hmm I called and ordered my food and got my, my margarita. And uh, <laughs> and she said, oh, just give us 10 minutes. I have never, it's never been like that. Right. So, like, it just, so they're not really busy. A lot of restaurants, you would think they would be busy because it's a lot of these younger generations who just can't cook. Which I don't understand why the stores are so empty because it's mostly got to be these older people between uh, 25 and older that's in the stores buying up all the food because people 25 and uh, they don't know how to they don't know how to cook they don't know how to do nothing. I ain't gonna say 25. I'm gonna be about 27, 28. Uh, I'm 28 and I know how to go to the store and, cook, and grocery shop and cook. That's what I'm saying. About 28. That what they go to the store and buy stuff. Yeah. Oh, all right. I was talking about the ones that don't cook. Like, no, I cook. <laughs> yeah, they're not no, about 28. Them the ones that's cooking. Them 25, 26, 27, they ain't, them the ones who ain't cooking. Oh, well, right. Well, yeah. So, uh, that, I don't, wait, what was I talking about? <laughs> I don't remember. I lost talk about that fast. Uh, yeah, but we, oh, yeah, right. The small business is lost. Right. So, yeah, that's what, but then, the, like I said, um, for the hair stores and stuff, or the, what else you had said, hair stores, the mom and pop, pop shop. Sh- yeah, because yeah, mom and pop shops, I have not seen a lot of mom and pop shops actually open. No, like so they're, they're the, closed too. Even the, the you know the spare tire place up the street, it's been closed. Like oh, it's, oh I were past it. There's a bunch of people out there today. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, see, they finally opened back up, but see, even they were closed. But like I said, you can only be closed for so long before you start to lose profit. I need to go especially there. Especially when screwing my tire. Espe- <laughs> especially when you're not, you know, really making nothing, you know, but maybe a thousand dollars a week, but you still have to pay your employees, you know, maybe under the table, whatever or however you're doing it, but you still have to remain as a business. I don't think no business could operate with on oh, without making a thousand dollars a week. There's no way possible no business can operate on making a thousand dollars a week, but. Like like the big companies like the FedEx CEO, he um he want to put ninety five percent of his earnings of his paycheck whatever it is that he's getting paid back into the company so that they can pay workers. Yeah, I saw something like that. So I, 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 it's a couple of it's a couple of corporations that's doing that, but it's not enough. Not, it's not, not enough. Not the people who employ me. And right, and <laughs> I want to you know a lot. Of, I want to say. Congrat! I, I can't say congratulations, but I just want to say to the celebrities, we appreciate what you're doing because, you, although we know it's charity, and it, at the end of the year, just it's, a tax write off. It's a tax write off, <laughs> but you know, it's the fact that you're actually giving because, like I said, it's a lot of the people, like the people that we work for, that aren't even thinking see, about us like that. See, the thing is, the the reason why I I, I want to say thank you to, like you said, some of the celebrities because I, it's not. This is something that's affecting them also. This exactly. isn't something that it, that they're just doing to get just the tax write off. This is something that's affecting them and their family members. Like uh, the, uh, the singer Pink and her son had tested positive for the coronavirus. Mm-hmm. So this is something that's just affecting everybody. And her mom works at a hospital. Right. Well, worked at a hospital for eighteen yeah. years in Philadelphia. So, you know, this is something that is just affecting everybody, and that's why I'm happy that some of the celebrities did step in our in our sincere about you know the efforts that they're doing like kareem uh, kareem had donated a whole bunch of um hospital gear i think goggles to a hospital in la Mm -hmm. so you know donating the supplies because you know working in i think here in wisconsin it's the only level one trauma hospital no supplies do get low that they do so we the hospital workers do appreciate the supplies that comes in um so just that's about it no, it isn't. Because, you know, I miss y'all so much. It's only been a week and I miss them. I did. <laughs> well, you know what? I ain't going to say I miss y'all, but you know what? I enjoy talking to you all. I'm glad mm-hmm. that I've been asked to come back and step in for Miss Tina Marie while she's out. Mm-hmm. She's going to be fussing. <laughs> I mean, no, she ain't. But, uh, yeah, make sure y'all go uh, send a, a little note to Tina Marie on you know, her little, she lost her aunt, so... Make sure y'all reach out to her, send her some hugs. But um, yeah, so to wrap up, you know the election in the Wisconsin went went very horribly. But make sure you always go out and exercise your right to vote. 
It's very important. No matter what is standing against you, like a six out. I wanted. I was just really surprised at the amount of people who still came out and risked their lives to vote. Because they tired of this mess that's going on in Wisconsin. Right. That's why. So I was really amazed by that. So thank you to everybody who went out and vote, voted. And um, we we got to do better. And hopefully the Republican Party, who put so many lives at risk, can look at this and be like, hey, you know what? We messed up and we got to do better. So, um, yeah, thank you guys for tuning in for another episode of Same Cast, Different Day Podcast. Please don't forget to leave a review, hopefully a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts and on Spotify. Make sure you guys follow and um, follow and subscribe to the podcast. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at Martel Rowland. On, actually, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Martel Rowland. Hey! And you can follow me on Facebook and on Instagram at Marcus Buckalter. Oh, he had his Facebook and Instagram. That's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you guys for tuning in to another episode. And I will see you guys. Well, I said see. Oh, uh-huh. see. Help us. See you next episode. We'll talk to you next episode. Bye. Refocus on your dreams with American Family Insurance. Register for the Dream Bank Dream Summit, a free virtual experience designed to give you the confidence to fearlessly pursue your dreams. Featuring Glennon Doyle, Tan France, and the Scott Brothers. Register at amfam.com slash dreambank. Unexpected trouble? CashNet USA can take the stress out of borrowing emergency funds. Our fast, secure application process makes it easy to apply online 24-7. Plus, CashNet USA offers same-day funding if approved before 10.30 a.m. Central Time, Monday through Friday. Additional terms may apply. Visit CashNetUSA.com or tap the banner to apply today.